Remember that the prefix by means to. So when we say binomial or binomial random variables, we're talking about a specific kind of variable that can only take on two values. So for example, flipping a coin would be a great example because when you flip a coin, you can only get one of two values, heads or tails. Another example would be if I have two marbles in a bag, a red one and a green one, and I'm doing trials where I reach into the bag and pull out one marble, that could be a binomial random variable because I'm either going to get the red marble or the green marble. There are exactly two possible outcomes, not fewer and not more. So when we have exactly two possible outcomes, it's possible that we're dealing with a binomial random variable. But exactly two possible outcomes isn't the only criteria for having a binomial random variable. We also have to have independent trials. In other words, when I'm flipping the coin over and over again, I'm running a bunch of trials. When I'm pulling a marble out of a bag over and over, I'm running a bunch of trials. Each of those trials must be independent in order for us to call it a binomial random variable. The next thing is that each trial has to be able to be classified as a success or a failure. And all we do there is define which kind of outcome we're looking for. So for example, if I'm flipping a coin over and over again and I want heads or I want to look at how many times I get heads, I can call getting heads a success and getting tails a failure. Or if I'm drawing a marble out of a bag and I have a green or a red marble, then I can call getting the green marble a success and getting the red marble a failure. But you have to be able to classify each outcome as a success or a failure. There also have to be a fixed number of trials. In other words, you have to be able to say, I flip a coin 10 times, or I draw a marble out of the bag five times. You have a fixed number of trials that you're running. I can't say something like, how many trials does it take me to pull a green marble out of the bag? We're not defining a specific number of trials in that case. So we have to have a fixed number of trials that we've determined up front. We are running this many trials exactly. And then the last one, the fourth and final, is that the probability of success on each trial is constant. In other words, if I'm flipping a coin and I define getting heads as a success, is the probability of getting heads on the first trial the same as the probability of getting heads on the second trial and the same as the probability of getting heads on the third trial and on and on and on. That probability has to stay constant. Or if I'm pulling marbles out of a bag, I have one red marble, one green marble, and I say getting the green marble is a success. Well, I can pull out a marble and the probability of getting green is the same if I then put that marble back in the bag, shake it around, pull the marble out again. The probability is still the same if I then again put the marble back in the bag, shake it around, and pull it out again. So that probability of getting a green marble is staying constant. That's required for a binomial random variable. If we're thinking about a scenario and we run through these four criteria and our scenario doesn't meet any one or more of these criteria, then we can't call our variable a binomial random variable. We might be able to do something else with it, but we can't call it a binomial random variable. We have to meet each and every one of these if we want to classify our variable as a binomial random variable. So let's do an example. And let's say for a second that we have two green marbles and one red marble in like a paper bag so we can't see inside of it. And we're going to do five trials where we pull out one of the marbles, look at the color, and then put the marble back. Of course, we're going to record the color that we get in each of the five trials. And the question we want to answer is what is the probability of getting the red marble exactly three times? First of all, let's say right away that the probability of getting red three times actually means that we're going to get green two times and we're going to get red three times. Because if we're running five trials and we're getting red three times, well, the only other option out of the bag is green, which means we must have gotten green the other two times. So before we go forward with this problem, let's confirm, first of all, that this is a binomial random variable. So the first criteria is independent trials. 
Well, what we're doing is we're pulling a marble out of the bag, writing down what color we got, and then putting the marble back in, shaking up the bag, and pulling another one out again. Every time we do that, the marble that we pulled out the first time isn't going to affect the marble that we pull out the second time. It's not going to affect the marble we pull out the third time because we're putting the marble back and shaking up the bag. So the outcome of each trial will not affect the outcome of any of the other trials. So we can say that we do in fact have independent trials. What about success or failure? We need to be able to classify the outcome of each trial as a success or a failure. Well, since we're interested in the probability of getting red three times, let's go ahead and call getting red a success, and we'll call getting green a failure. And keep in mind that for these problems, success and failure doesn't mean good and bad. It just means that we're going to define red as what we were looking for and green as what we weren't looking for. In this case, we can define each trial as a success or a failure because we just call red the success and green the failure, so we meet that criteria as well. Do we have a fixed number of trials? Well, yes, we already said up front before we even started that we're going to run five trials exactly. So we've got a fixed number. And then the probability of success has to stay constant. Well, the probability of a success is the probability that we get red. And the probability that we get red, so the probability of getting red, is going to be equal to one third because there are three possible outcomes in the bag and one outcome that meets our criteria. So one out of the three outcomes is a success. So the probability of a success or the probability of getting red is one third. And if I put the marble I pulled back into the bag every time and shake it up, the probability of getting red on any one pull is always going to be one third. I'm always going to have the two green marbles and the one red marble in the bag when I pull one out. So the probability of getting red will always be one third, and that probability is going to stay constant across all of my trials. Therefore, I can define this as a binomial random variable, and I can try to answer the question here that we said, what is the probability of getting red on exactly three poles? Well, for a binomial random variable, there's a formula that we use for that. It's the probability of k successes in n attempts is going to be equal to, this is called n choose k, it's the binomial coefficient, and we'll go back to that in a second, times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. p is the probability of success, and k is the exact number of times that we want a success. This binomial coefficient, that's what this notation here is called, the n choose k is the binomial coefficient. That is just the combination. So this is the combination n choose k. We learned about this in permutations and combinations, but n choose k, that combination, is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. So that's the first thing we want to find. We want to find this combination because then we'll be able to plug that into our formula for the binomial coefficient. Then we'll find the rest of this here. So let's start with n choose k. Well for us that's just choosing the number of successes we want out of the number of trials that we're going to run. So in our problem that's really 5 choose 3 because we're running 5 trials and we want 3 successes. So we're going to say 5 choose 3 is equal to 5 factorial when we plug 5 in for n divided by 3 factorial when we plug 3 in for k times 5 minus 3 factorial. When we expand out those factorials, remember that 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then in the denominator, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. 5 minus 3, we have to do what's inside the parentheses first. 5 minus 3 is 2, so we get 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Now we can cancel common factors from the numerator and denominator. Well, 
three, two, and one cancel with three, two, and one, everything's multiplied together in both the numerator and denominator, which is why I can just cancel factors like that. So what we're left with is five times four in the numerator, 20, divided by two times one in the denominator, or two, and 20 over two is 10. So my binomial coefficient will be 10. Now I just need to plug everything else into the formula. So I'm saying the probability of k successes in n attempts. Well, we want three successes in five attempts. So we could maybe just write that as three in five. This isn't technical, I'm just abbreviating here. We could also have written this more technically as the probability of r equals three, because we want exactly three red poles out of five trials. So that's the probability of getting the red marble three times is going to be equal to, we already calculated that the binomial coefficient was 10, so we'll plug that in. And then remember, p is the probability of success. Well, the probability of success we already calculated as one-third. The probability of getting the red marble is one-third, so we'll multiply this by one-third, and then we're raising that to the k, which is the number of successes that we want to get. Since we want three successes, we want to raise this to the third power. Then one minus the probability of success. Well, if the probability of success is one third, then one minus one third is two thirds. So we're going to get here two thirds, and then we're raising that to the n minus k. Well, n was five, k was three, because we're running five trials and we want three successes. So five minus three is two. So we're going to put five minus three or two in here, so we get two thirds to the two. Now the important thing to realize about this formula, because this one looks a little complicated, but we just need to remember the combination formula here to calculate the binomial coefficient, but everything else, this here, one third, this is the probability of success, the probability of getting a red marble raised to the number of times we want to have that success. We wanna have that success three times. This is the probability of failure, the probability in our case of getting a green marble raised to the number of times that we want to have that failure. So we're just saying probability of success raised to the number of times we want a success multiplied by the probability of failure raised to the number of times we want the failure. That's what this formula means. So just think about success to the power of success times failure to the power of failure. That's all we really need to remember, plus this binomial coefficient out in front. But if we can remember that, then that is our formula for the probability of k successes in n attempts. So now we just need to do the math here. So what we get is 10, and then 1 third to the 3 is 1 third times 1 third times 1 third, which is 1 over 27. And then 2 thirds squared is 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which is four ninths. So when we multiply across our numerators, we get 10 times one times four is 40. And across the denominators, 27 times nine is 243. And if we want, we can calculate that as a decimal and say this is approximately equal to 16.5%, which means that there's about a 16 and a half percent chance of pulling the red marble exactly three times if we run five trials. Keep in mind that I can go through the same process and use this same formula for any number of successes that I want to. So I could, for example, do the same calculation to find the probability that we get the red marble exactly one time or exactly two times or exactly three times like we did, or exactly four times or exactly five times, or exactly zero times. Or if I wanted to say instead, what's the probability that I pull a green marble exactly twice, I could define a green marble as success and a red marble as failure. And then I could go through and do these calculations again and I could figure that out. So this is just the method you'll use for finding the probability of an exact number of successes in a specific number of trials. Continuing on with our same marble example, I wanna show you briefly how to plot a probability distribution for a binomial random variable. So we have that same marble problem where we have two green marbles 
and we have one red marble, and we're running the same number of trials. We're running five trials, and we want to look at the probability distribution for pulling a red marble, like we talked about, zero times, one time, two times, etc. So we're going to say probability of pulling red zero times in five pulls. So we'll say zero in five. And we want to calculate all these probabilities. So we're going to say the probability of getting red once in five trials, the probability of getting red twice in five trials, and on to five. And I'm doing it like this because I want to show you the pattern here. So we're going to use that same formula where we had at first the binomial coefficient. So the binomial coefficient for this will be 5 choose 0. We're running 5 trials, but we're choosing success 0 times. The binomial coefficient here will be 5 choose 1. Here it'll be 5 choose 2, so we'll fill this in the rest of the way. Then remember we wanted to say we multiply that by the probability of success raised to the number of times we want that success. Well, we said success was pulling the red marble. The probability of pulling the red marble was one-third, so one-third, and we want to raise that to the number of times that we're pulling the red marble. Well, here we're saying we're going to pull the red marble zero times, so we would raise that to the zero power. Here we want to pull the red marble once, here we want to pull the red marble twice and on down to pulling the red marble five times. And then we say the probability of failure raised to the number of times that we have the failure. So here, the probability of failure is the probability of pulling the green marble, which we know is two-thirds. And here we're going to fail five times. Here we have a two-thirds probability and we're going to fail four times. Notice how the probabilities one-third and two-thirds always add to one because the probability distribution always has to sum to one, and the exponents, the number of successes and the number of failures, always has to sum to five because we're always running five trials. So here, probability of failure, we're going to have three failures. Two plus three is five. One plus four is five. Zero plus five is five. So it's always going to sum to five. Now from here it's just a bunch of arithmetic, but if we do these calculations, we see that the probability of pulling red zero times in five trials is approximately 14%. The probability of pulling one red marble in five trials is about 33%. The probability of pulling two red marbles in five trials is also approximately 33%, and we're rounding to the nearest percent here or to the nearest hundredth. The probability of pulling exactly three red marbles in five trials we already calculated was about 16%. The probability of four red marbles is about 4%. And the probability of pulling five marbles is less than 1%. If we round it to the nearest percent, it's 0%, even though it does have some probability greater than zero. It rounds to zero if we round to the nearest percent. So now that we've done all this work, what we see is a little bit of a probability distribution. It shows us the likelihood of pulling the red marble a certain number of times, all the way from zero times to five times. These are all of the possible outcomes because we're running exactly five trials, no more, no less. So the only values that this binomial random variable can take on are zero, one, two, three, four, and five, since the binomial random variable models the number of times we pull a red marble. So these are our only options. These are the percent chances associated with each option. Then we can go ahead and graph this as a probability distribution. And here's what that looks like. So this is the probability that our binomial random variable, where our binomial random variable represents the number of times we pull a red marble, this shows the probability that we pull a red marble zero times. The vertical axis here is in percentages. So this is actually 10%, this is 20%, 30% chance, and 40% chance. 
So the probability that we pull zero red marbles in five trials is here at about 14%. We got 33% for both pulling a red marble one time and two times. So we show that up here at 33. And then we have our 16%, our 4%, and our rounded to 0%. So now we get a visual picture of the likelihood of all of these possible outcomes for the binomial random variable. And what this tells us is that if we run five trials, we're most likely to pull a red marble once or twice. We're less likely to pull a red marble zero times or three times. And it's really unlikely that we'll pull the red marble four times or five times. In fact, I could even add these percentages together. 33 plus 33 is 66. And I could say, there's a 66% chance that we're either gonna pull the red marble once or twice if we run five trials, because together those outcomes account for 66%. So I've got about a two thirds chance that one of these two things is gonna happen, and then a much smaller chance that any of the other outcomes occur. So this is what the probability distribution looks like for a binomial random variable, and these are the calculations that we go through in order to create that distribution.